Welcome to the biochemistry lecture series. Today's topic would be on uh, plasma proteins. Now, uh, plasma is uh, prepared uh, by collecting the blood in a tube uh, containing um, an anticoagulant. Now, uh, this plasma uh, contains uh, various types of proteins uh, known as albumin, globulins, and fibrinogen. Now, albumin is uh, present in uh, highest uh, quantity, uh, almost 65% uh, of the uh, plasma proteins uh, belong to uh, this category of uh, proteins. Now, um, albumin and globulins can be separated by uh, doing the electrophoresis um, and uh, whereby you get the albumin uh, migrating uh, faster and then the alpha 1 globulin, alpha 2 globulin beta globulin and uh, gamma globulins. Now, uh, fibrinogen band also can be seen uh, ahead of uh, gamma globulins. Now, uh, uh, albumin is the uh, major plasma protein and about uh, 12 grams of albumin are synthesized uh, in the liver uh, per day to replenish the uh, turnover of uh, plasma albumin uh, whose uh, half-life is uh, 20 days. Now, the functions of uh, uh, albumin are of great significance. For example, uh, albumin exerts uh, oncotic pressure and due to this oncotic pressure, the uh, fluid exchange between the arterial end of the capillaries and the venous end of the capillaries takes place. Now, at the arterial end, the uh, the uh, hydrostatic pressure or the blood pressure uh, which acts uh, from the inside of the vessel to the outside is uh, about 35 mm of Hg. Now the uh, oncotic pressure or the uh, osmotic pressure due to the plasma proteins uh, is about uh, 25 mm of Hg at the arterial end and uh, this uh, is in opposite uh, opposition to the blood pressure. That means it is acting from um, outside to inside. Uh, that is the absorption pressure. Blood pressure is the filtration pressure. So the net uh, uh, filtration rate uh, is uh, 10 mm of Hg. So the fluid from the vessels go out into the tissues at the arterial end. Now at the venous end, a different uh, situation uh, prevails and the uh, blood pressure is only uh, 15 mm of Hg at the uh, venous end of the uh, capillaries uh, and the oncotic pressure or the osmotic pressure due to the plasma proteins uh, is, remains, is remaining the same that is uh, 25 mm of Hg. Now uh, the difference again is uh, 10 millimeters of Hg and hence the uh, net uh, uh, you know uh, filtration pressure and the uh, absorption pressure they are the same and so the, amount, the, the same amount of fluid uh, that is going out at the arterial end also returns back uh, at the venous end. So there is uh, no occurrence of edema if sufficient uh, plasma proteins are present. Now uh, this is known as starving uh, hypothesis but if the plasma protein concentration especially the albumin concentration decreases then you know uh, the oncotic pressure also decreases and hence uh, more fluid goes out of the uh, at the arterial end and less fluid comes back at the venous end now the excess of fluid accumulates in the tissue spaces and this leads to uh, edema now there are various conditions in which uh, edema can uh, take place one the when the plasma albumin synthesis uh, taking place in the liver is um, um, I mean, uh, less, the rate is less, uh, especially in a damaged uh, liver when the hepatocytes are damaged due to an uh, infection like uh, hepatocellular jaundice, the rate of synthesis of albumin is decreased and so the, there is a chance of um, edema occurring. Now another condition in which plasma albumin can be decreased is when the uh, kidneys uh, pass the uh, albumin in the urine known as albuminuria and this is because of uh, nephrotic syndrome. So albumin is lost in the urine and hence 
there is a decreased level of uh, albumin uh, in the plasma. This again leads to a dematous uh, state. Now another uh, condition is uh, seen in uh, small children who is suffering from partial where the protein intake is um, uh, decreased and hence the plasma protein synthesis is affected and uh, due to this uh, the uh, albumin synthesis is uh, reduced and hence again the uh, edematous state can take place. A fourth condition may be due to a uh, protein losing enteropathy where the proteins are not digested uh, to amino acids and uh, so they are not absorbed. So all these conditions can lead to uh, less albumin in the plasma and lead to edematous uh, conditions. Now another uh, plasma protein um, is uh, known as alpha-1 antitrypsin. Now alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, is also known as alpha-1 antiproteinase uh, and this uh, enzyme actually uh, can inhibit another enzyme known as uh, elastase. Now elastase is produced uh, by the uh, macrophages uh, when, the, uh, when there is an infection in the lungs, uh, then these uh, macrophages produce the elastase enzyme and uh, it is necessary to prevent the action of elastase, otherwise um, the lung tissue may be uh, degraded. To, uh, to, do the, uh, to do this, the alpha-1 antiproteinase uh, enzyme uh, combines with the elastase enzyme, uh, thereby making it um, um, inactive and so the lung is protected. Now, uh, uh, otherwise, you know, if, the, the, if there is an absence of alpha-1 antiproteinase, then emphysema can be caused. Now, in uh, smokers, it is found that the alpha antiproteinase activity is decreased because one of the uh, cysteine moieties are oxidized to sulfoxide due to the smoke, and hence that is the reason the smokers, you know, uh, suffer from various types of lung disorders. So, alpha one antiproteinase is a very important uh, plasma protein. Now, the next plasma protein of uh, importance is the haptoglobins. Haptoglobins are plasma proteins which can bind to the uh, extra corpus uh, hemoglobin. Now, um, hemoglobin being a small molecule uh, can be excreted in the urine uh, and hemoglobinuria may cause. And uh, hemoglobins contain uh, globulins and also the uh, iron and so it is necessary to preserve both uh, the uh, globulins and the iron. Uh, and so, uh, if hemoglobin combines with the haptoglobin, the molecular size is increased and so uh, the uh, kidneys are not able to excrete it in the urine. Because iron is uh, such an important uh, metal, uh, uh, you know, uh, whose absorption from the GI tract is very limited, only about 2 to 3 milligrams per day is absorbed and uh, we should uh, uh, preserve the uh, iron content of the body and uh, by not allowing it to be uh, excreted in the uh, urine. Now that is about the haptoglobins. Now another plasma protein is hemopexin and hemopexin actually combines with the free heme. So uh, there are so many uh, plasma protein fractions which are of uh, great significance. Uh, yet another one is the ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is a copper binding uh, protein and uh, it, it has also got uh, peroxidase activity. Now if the ceruloplasmin level is uh, decreased, then uh, the copper may be uh, deposited in various tissues and uh, in and around the cornea also copper can be deposited and this uh, gives a uh, bluish green um, ring around the uh, uh, cornea. This is known as uh, kaiser fleischer ring. So copper is required for uh, several important uh, functions in the body, uh, the activation of certain enzymes also require uh, copper. Uh, some other um, uh, plasma proteins include uh, retinol binding protein which binds with the vitamin A form uh, that is the uh, retinol and uh, another, yet another one is uh, transportin uh, which binds with the cortisol uh, hormone. And uh, yet another one is the thyro, uh, thyroid binding uh, globulins uh, which binds to the uh, thyroid uh, hormones. 
So there are several uh, plasma proteins of uh, great significance and there are of course uh, several uh, plasma enzymes which are also uh, uh, proteins in nature. Uh, yet another one would be the uh, lipoproteins. Uh, the lipoproteins are uh, chylomicrons, uh, very low density lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins, uh, intermediate density lipoproteins and uh, high density lipoproteins. Now lipids as they are insoluble in the watery uh, plasma, they have to combine with the uh, proteins so that they can be uh, transported. So uh, plasma lipoproteins also are actually uh, plasma uh, protein and uh, lipid uh, complexes. Then of course uh, there is uh, immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins as the name indicate they are uh, defense proteins. Immunoglobulins are produced by the B lymphocytes uh, whereas the T lymphocytes are responsible uh, for the uh, cell mediated immunity. So there are two types of immunity. One is uh, humoral immunity uh, that is uh, by the production of uh, the immunoglobulins by the uh, beta uh, B lymphocytes and the cell mediated immunity which is uh, done by the uh, lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. So uh, the, uh, the T lymphocytes are responsible for the um, uh, rejection of uh, allografts and also uh, some of the uh, T lymphocytes serve as um, uh, tumor suppressor uh, cells and uh, uh, for example in HIV infection the uh, CD4 cells are uh, decreased. So uh, there are also tumor, uh, there are also um, uh, immune uh, suppression cells also present uh, which is uh, actually uh, decreased in autoimmune disorders like uh, rheumatoid arthritis and such other diseases. Now uh, coming to the um, immunity, I immunity uh, is the response of the uh, antigens that is entering our body and um, immune response uh, has got several important uh, properties that it is, um, uh, it has got memory that uh, when once an antigen is injected into the body, the immunoglobulins are produced and when the same antigen is uh, again injected after a uh, one year period, the same type of immunoglobulins can be uh, produced. Now there is so there is memory and uh, they can uh, immune system can differentiate between the uh, foreign uh, bodies and the self. Self and non-self can be differentiated by the immune system. Now uh, that is another property and, uh, and hence the vaccines have been developed as there is uh, memory and also uh, specificity for example the, uh, the whole uh, mechanism of uh, vaccine development uh, is based on the immune uh, response. Uh, so uh, the first immunoglobulin is the IgG, uh, immunoglobulin G, uh, so named because of the uh, gamma chain uh, which is the heavy chain of uh, IgG. Now uh, IgA uh, contains the heavy chain alpha, IgM contains the heavy chain uh, macro, uh, IgD contains the delta chain and the IgE contains the side chain. Now IgG is the smallest of all the immunoglobulins and uh, because of this uh, it can pass across the uh, placenta. So the uh, fetus and later on the newborn infant uh, has got the uh, immunity due to the uh, immunoglobulin uh, G that is the IgG. Hence uh, only from mother's blood to the fetus only IgG can uh, pass because they are small molecules, not the other immunoglobulins. Uh, now uh, IgM is a macro uh, molecule, it is a pentamer and so it is not able to pass through the uh, placenta but it has got its own importance in uh, tackling the, the uh, microorganisms. Its effect is uh, quite uh, uh, magnified. Then there is um, uh, IgA. IgA is present in the um, seromucous secretions like uh, sweat, uh, tears, then uh, gastrointestinal secretions, respiratory fluid and uh, uh, genitourinary uh, fluid. So it is a secretory uh, immunoglobulin that is IgA and it has got, it is a dimer, two immunoglobulins joined by a joint uh, piece 
and then uh, also a secretary piece. So they are secretary anti-partisan. That is known as IGA. Now, uh, in the case of um, uh, IgE, they are uh, mediating the allergic response. Now, allergic response is the hypersensitivity reaction, overreaction of the immune system. Now, many of us are, you know, uh, allergic to certain substances like uh, pollen grains or insect bite or uh, uh, the dust or uh, maybe certain constituents of certain uh, foods also we are allergic and also to some drugs like uh, insulin, uh, like uh, penicillin. Now uh, penicillin, if it is injected into a person uh, who is uh, sensitive to uh, penicillin, then you know the penicillin attaches with the uh, uh, macrophages, uh, uh, mast cells and uh, then uh, the mast cells uh, also uh, join with the IgE and if penicillin is uh, injected once more then the uh, mast cells, uh, mast cell degranulation takes place and histamine and uh, slow reacting substance are released and these, um, uh, this produces the Im immediate response uh, uh, immunity. Now uh, there is a delayed uh, immune response also uh, for example, uh, you know, we can test the uh, presence of tubercle bacilli in the sputum of TB patients. Now, uh, this, uh, if the TB, such TB patients are, uh, uh, you know, uh, injected uh, with uh, the tubercle uh, bacilli, then, you know, there will be presence of um, uh, reddish patches after about uh, 72 hours. Now, so this is known as uh, delayed uh, hypersensitivity. Now, one important thing as far as uh, the immunoglobulins are concerned, uh, we should know about the RH incompatibility. Now, RH incompatibility means when the uh, when a mother who is uh, RH negative has got an RH positive baby, then uh, during the first delivery, the blood from the uh, uh, the newborn can uh, go to the uh, mother, and the mother uh, will produce antibodies against the uh, uh, the newborns uh, or the fetal blood. Now the first uh, delivery may be safe but the subsequent deliveries may uh, carry a risk and uh, there may, it may cause a hemolytic uh, crisis in the babies and uh, the baby may be stillborn because the antibody titer against the RH antigen uh, could be increasing. So this is known as erythroblastosis uh, fetalis but uh, this can be uh, uh, prevented or minimized by uh, giving an anti-RH antibody uh, injection during the last trimester of pregnancy of RH uh, negative mothers uh, and so uh, the RH antibodies generated in the mother is uh, neutralized and the baby, the subsequent babies can be uh, protected in this manner. So this is about uh, uh, various types of uh, plasma proteins uh, including immunoglobulins and um, of course uh, you know there are hyper hyperimmunoglobulinemias and hypoimmunoglobulinemias and um, uh, maybe the monoclonal antibodies are sometimes present where the M band is seen in the IgM uh, fraction of the electrophoretogram. So all these can be analyzed by various techniques uh, known as uh, immunoelectrophoresis and uh, immunodiffusion uh, uh, techniques. Okay.